One of a Kind with Rob Van Dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience. One of a Kind with RVD is presented by Get Blitzed. And you can get 15% off your order when you head to get-blitz.com and use promo code RVD. Get 15% off. When he passed all the concussion tests and he feels healthy um, in theory and he wants to play at that point, why, why would you hold him back except for what I just said? And that's the hype. That's the fear that it might happen again. Well, I'm glad you made mention of that because, yeah, I, for, I almost forgot. I wanted to bring up the Tua Tungo Valoa uh, injury that happened. Uh, this past Thursday, uh, the Buffalo Bills played the Miami Dolphins, and Tua Tungo Valoa had had two concussions previously. And one was really bad, and then there was another one that they followed up with. And then now he just got a third one on Thursday. And um, Chris Nowinski, they had the video on there, and he, he made note of him like kind of bawling his fist and like uh, signs of like something that happened with the concussion. And then um, today, I, I just read this before we got on the air, Rob, that uh, according to reports, to a tongue of a lo- Now, the, the huge topic is should to a retire. He's a young player. He only started in 2020, and so he's only been in the league for four years. But uh, yeah, like I said, he had three concussions, but a lot of people in the media and everybody's saying, should he retire? Should Like, he should be done, maybe, and everything mm-hmm. like that. And so here's what... Uh, so Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungvaloa has no plans to retire after suffering his latest concussion. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reported on Sunday NFL game day morning. Per sources informed of the information. So, um, kind of just Rob wanted to get your perspective on something like that. He's an athlete. He's in the competitive mode. Obviously, he does not want to end. But a lot of people are concerned for his well-being. Uh, you know, Chris. Here, yeah, I have a I have a fairly heavy opinion on this. Okay. You know, I don't. Yeah. Um, as long as he's transparent and he's open, and that means that he's getting the uh, cognitive testing, if they clear him and he's good to go, he's good to go. You know, uh, holding him back when he passed all the concussion tests and he feels healthy um, in theory and he wants to play at that point, why, why would you hold him back except for what I just said? And that's the hype. That's the fear that it might happen again. That's how I look at it. I feel like why not hope that it doesn't happen again. And if it does happen again, maybe he'll be okay. Anyway, from personal experience, I've had my head rocked self-diagnosed concussions in the hundreds. Like I said, in headstrong, one time I sat through, um, my whole career and I was thinking about the timeline and I said, um, no, I guess I just said hundreds in there somewhere. I came up with like 500, um, the definition of a concussion that is still, since it's so new, it could be debatable because to me, and this was what I got from, from, from Chris, but it wasn't his exact words is my interpretation of what Chris Nowinski said way back when we filmed Headstrong. He said, anytime you get your head rock and your senses are off a little bit, he said, just assume it's a concussion unless you find out differently. And, you know, so I've always thought, you know, even if I get my head rocked and, and like, I'm like, everything's kind of spinning around for a second and then it goes back to normal and I'm able to keep going, in my mind, I count that as a little mini concussion. So when I say I've had hundreds, I've had so many of those, hundreds of those, and there's no reason to stop me anywhere along the line. The theory is, and I don't stand behind this theory, that you become more susceptible to getting more concussions. What my doctor told me and what makes sense to me, believe it or not, it's, uh, it's, it's going to go against popular theory. Uh, my doctor, because when he cleared me to wrestle, I said, okay, uh, like I'm clear clear like he said yeah no you should be fine you're good to go and i was like but i gotta be like extra careful or i could get like a concussion easily again and he was saying no he said i don't think so if you get another concussion that one's on its own you know you would have you would have got that one anyway and that's the way that i feel from my experience i think when people say that when you get more concussions you're more susceptible to them 
Maybe with some people, but like I always say, we're all different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's okay. That's an interesting point because I um I was curious because I, I've heard I, like the media, the great deal of the media is like he should be done. And initially too, I was like, oh, maybe he should hang it up. But the more I kind of think about it, it's like, well, you do see a lot of people get these concussions, and you know, and over the course of time, you look at the NFL players back in the day, they would get concussions all the time, and some would have CTE, or like have the problem with that. But that's, uh, I've heard that different things about that, too. But if you look at somebody like Troy Aikman, who's got a crap ton of concussions, and now he's, like, still the lead announcer for with on Fox, and he does a great job, and he's got no problems. He retired uh, after all that. But, you know, so it's, it's definitely something to, like, consider. But, yeah, I think if you're transparent, and he's under the microscope when it comes to that stuff. Like, doctors are going to be looking after him and everything like that. So... If they, he gets clear from that, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Rob. I'm on that, too. So. Yeah, if he feels like he's ready to go and the tests say he's ready to go, then I don't understand why you would hold him back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's going to be his choice, too. Um, let's see what this MZ just chimed in here. Is RVD familiar with frontal lobe damage? Does he feel quite a few wrestlers of his era suffer had suffered from frontal lobe damage, particularly with unprotected chair shots to the head? Are you familiar with that, Rob? Frontal lobe damage. Well, I mean, if if we're saying that's a specific uh, term on on a particular kind of injury, you know, besides the, the name implications. Um, I wouldn't say that I've heard much about it referred to in that way. Um, when I was mentioning the different symptoms that I would get in the ring, as in slow motion or the sound is out or uh, television or floaters or sometimes spinning, I, I, I think probably probably that was depending on where on my brain i was getting hit yeah yeah I mean, how, what else could it be but i don't know that for sure but like a lot of times i would like when i bump i would knock myself silly just from hitting the back of my head on the mat sometimes i blame my ponytail don't know if that was a factor or not but i've done that more than anything and um and i used to wonder like a chair shot in the front um, a headshot you know like that in the back or, you know, getting thrown into the corner post head on. I wonder if that's what's causing all the different symptoms. But I was never able to or never even thought about studying and relating the different symptoms to the different um, pieces of action. I wish I would have because it makes sense, you know, in the front lobe, you know, that's obviously that's in charge of a lot of uh, different stuff than, uh, than, than, say, like the rest of your brain. Um, but um, I do have, like, um, like I said, almost all of my, a lot of my peers, at least that are my generation or older, a lot of them tell me that they have uh, at least some kind of symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could imagine. A lot of them mistakenly think it's CTE because they don't understand what CTE is. Um, a lot of them, you know, say they complain of just uh, headaches, uh, Sometimes, it, you know, just light sensitive is another thing that happens, you know, and uh, there's all these weird different symptoms that all go back. But, yeah, uh, most of the guys my age or older tell me that they're uh, that they're sure of it, that they have some concussion damage. And, um, you know, most of them were probably in that lawsuit when they all got behind like one big uh, case and uh and tried to tried to sue for it i definitely owe everything that happened to me on me everything was my fault um and i never reported when something did happen that's something that like now and we were talking before about how like the show is changing more to um, a production where the fans are there to have fun. They know their cues. They're there to, they're, you know, they're there for, for you. And, and it's, and it's, it's, it's all, I think quicker um, that I, I think, you know, than soaking up all of the energy, you know, uh, maybe, uh, uh, but it seems to be uh, more of everything you know, that, that um, in that way, that moves the story uh, forward. I think part of that new world is reporting more 
uh, when you're when you're hurt, why not? You know, the day of uh, uh, if I can still work, then I'm not hurt. You know, I can still go the next day. And, you know, the day of uh, having to prove that that you're tough or even. I mean, you know, we did it for personal reasons, too, because we did want to keep working. We sure. Keep working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I think that that is more fading out for more of a professional environment, which would include not only maybe less of a rough schedule, but also taking care of injuries and uh, um, and having the newest education and uh, information on it. So um, that's all that's all I think part of, you know, so uh, if you or someone that you know is suffering from concussion symptoms, these guys can get you help. They can hook you up with a doctor. They can put you with support groups. They can answer some questions. But it is you go to a CLF um, something.org. It's not, is it Helpline? CLF. Wait, Let me take can a you look at I think it's Helpline. Damn it. CLF. It up. Hold on. I think you're right, Rob. Here you go. Um, go to concussionfoundation.org and they will show you, uh, they can, you can contact the CLF helpline, which I'm trying to see if there's a certain phone number here. I think, I think CLF hotline.org was also, um, the thing that I said on my videos that they, you know, okay. but, either, but either way, you know, like that was part, that was very frustrating for me too, was, when uh, I had the double vision, it threw me so far off my game. You know, everything was way harder. And I kept thinking, you know, I'm sure it's going to go away. And it, and it just, man, it's certain patterns, checker patterns or something, you know, would like really make everything worse. I couldn't see the depth of anything or judge. And it was like trying to trying to find out who to go to, you know, like who do I, who do I go see, what doctors and you know, I, I don't know if I mentioned this here last week or not. I said it somewhere, so s excuse me if I'm repeating myself. But I went to one doctor, an eye doctor, in, uh, an eye doctor, the kind you get glasses from, in uh, Redondo Beach. And he told me that they were crazy. There was nothing wrong with my brain. I just needed a new prescription. Oh, yeah. You, I think you said yeah. that on here. Uh, it was, yeah, I got so much um, contradicting information. Wow. It made, that made it extra, extra really rough because it was like no help. But now there is. Yeah, always feel free to get a second opinion, guys. And then, uh, yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, it's not nice that people have it, but it's nice that you can have somebody too, maybe going through the same symptoms that you are, and that it can help you out and kind of give you a different perspective on how to think about that too. If they're having like a, like Rob uses the example of double vision. So maybe somebody else has double vision and can kind of relate to what you're going through too. Yeah. The, the, the exercises were really cool and they were always progressive, you know, just like any good therapist does always making it each week a little bit more challenging. And um, man, that's, I would say, but is it my, the muscles in my eye or is it in my brain? Like the wiring, and uh, the neurologist would say it's 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 all the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Jeez. Okay. This happens to be concussion awareness month. Yes, that's right, Rob. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I did a, a few videos for the uh, CLF, which I haven't been in contact with anyone in, in there for like a long, long time. So I'm happy to learn that my brain and spine is still donated. Not sure about the spine, but I think so. But but anyway, I wasn't sure because it had been like so long. And I, I thought maybe that foundation closed down because mm -hmm. um, because I used to do two tests a year for them. Oh. For, uh, yeah, um, like a memory test and, and cognitive test, you know, like um, I can't remember what the difference was. They weren't the exact same, but it seemed like they were both over the phone. But um, no, maybe one was written. I don't know. But anyway, years since I've done it. And I remember hearing something about them going out of business, but uh Happily, I found out from Chris Lewinsky that they just the company that did the tests is they're gone, but nothing else has changed. So that's cool. And um, and so, yeah, I just did a few videos uh, and, and I really, you know, I brought this up um, a few weeks ago. I said there's a documentary on YouTube about concussions and, uh, and sports. Maybe it's just wrestling, but I think it's sports. I, I'm not really sure. But they made up their own conclusion on me. 
And that makes me want to stand out more. Not, not just from an ego saying, hey, someone's going to think less of me than I want them to think of me. It's not just about that, but for the greater cause, because there's so much scare and so much hype to the head trauma. And you know what? A lot of it is really bad. I'm definitely not discounting that. But, you know, if you don't get checked out and you just automatically assume like the worst, you could like really put yourself in a panic unnecessarily. Sure. Yeah, and I've learned um, through my own um, experiences the difference between CTE and the long-term concussion syndrome. And uh, I've also learned that um, a lot of my peers don't know the difference, and they all think they have CTE. They openly say that, you know, oh, I know I got at least a little bit of CTE. It's a degenerative wasting disease. You don't just keep a little bit and hold it you know, and then hope it gets better. It's not like that. So um, you might not be as bad off as you think you are. It might just be some symptoms. Long-term symptoms can last and last and last and then go away. Not even just with the brain. You know, I've had it, I've had it happen like with my back, uh, different parts of my body um, over the years where it's like, wow, that used to always hurt me and now it doesn't. And um, definitely when it comes to the brain and all the studies are fairly new, because they haven't been studying this for decades and decades. Uh, for me, they couldn't tell me when I had, uh, I had the one concussion that gave me lasting symptoms. Everything else, um, my senses are off. For a few seconds, I shake it off. Usually right there in the ring and then I'm, I'm good to go. Sometimes sound would go out. Sometimes it'd be slow motion. Sometimes it would be, uh, you see floaters, uh, I got double vision on this one and it just didn't go away. I couldn't shake it off. And it lasted for the better part of two years. And for me, it was vision therapy along with time um, that eventually got me past that. But going through it, you know, I couldn't see the end. It wasn't in in sight in double vision it was like um i was asking the neurologist like you how long is this gonna last i, I don't know but i mean do you think am i always gonna have it no i don't think so i'd be like well, well how long is it gonna be like months is it gonna be years you go um i don't know your brain will let you know and that was the kind of information that i was getting uh but they were right so I feel, especially since that video tried to make it sound like I found out that I have cerebral atrophy, N not true at all. Whoever made that YouTube video looked at the x-ray, the MRI, and that was his, uh, his um, uh, what do you call it? Assessment. Diagnosis, assessment, yeah. yes, um, I guess. But anyway, because it is important to give hope to people that are, suffering from concussion symptoms. I, I want I feel more than ever like to stand on that and, and I, and, and, you know, bam, uh, get the word out. I, I, I'm standing up for hope because, because there is hope and, and, you know, there's hope and there's hype and too many people follow the hype. It's just easy to worry, but you worry about something that hasn't even happened. And then if it does happen, you got to go through it twice anyway. So better to go with the hope. Right.